Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm going to open a discussion about a question that comes up frequently on my channel. Is building a custom water cooling loop for your gaming PC worth the money it costs to do so? This is not an easy question to answer because each PC building enthusiast has different goals for their build. Building a custom water cooling loop is usually the most advanced level project that a PC builder will pursue before working on custom modding projects. It is effective and safe as long as you use distilled water-based coolant so you don't have to worry about catastrophe. Someone once spilled liquor into their PC and after drying it out, it still worked. For modern systems, it is debatable as to whether there is any point to custom water cooling loops with the existence of all-in-one cooling solutions like the Corsair H-Series for CPUs and the NZXT cooler adapters for GPUs. Nonetheless, building a custom water cooling loop is a very rewarding endeavor and instills one of the greatest feelings of accomplishment you can have with your clothes on. To supplement this video, I highly recommend you watch my guide on how to water cool your PC. There are different tiers of complexity a custom water cooling loop can have. At its simplest, you can have just one radiator serving your CPU. And as most complex, you can have your loop span an entire room, though more practically for the rest of us, you can have multiple radiators serving your CPU, GPU, RAM, and motherboard. To see the exact components I've used in my loop, please look in the video description. Minimally, all water cooling loops will need a pump, which moves the coolant through your loop, a reservoir, which helps bleed out air bubbles and provides an easy way to fill the loop, tubings and fittings, which connect all the hardware, water blocks, which provide your processors with thermal transfer contact points to the loop, radiators, which provide increased volume and surface area for fans to drive the heat out of your loop, fans to push or pull hot air from the radiators, and lastly, the water itself. There is no official standard to how many radiators you need serving each processor, but to make water cooling a worthwhile upgrade over air cooling, 120 millimeters of radiator per processor is a good rule of thumb that I just made up, that has no basis in science whatsoever. You can devote more radiators to your loop, but you reach a point of diminishing returns where even adding a car radiator won't help your loop's temperatures. The tallest barrier of entry for most enthusiasts is the cost of the hardware to complete your water cooling loop. For a basic loop that only cools your CPU, for the price of the average pump, reservoir, tubing, fans, and fittings, you would need about $330, just for CPU cooling, you could buy a GTX 970 for the money used for water cooling. For similar performance, you can just buy an NZXT Kraken X31 for $74. It costs four times as much for the simplest water cooling loop than an off-the-shelf product. A conservative estimate of the cost of the water cooling loop in my GTX 980 build is $874. That's more than the price of a 980 Ti. And going back to our discussion of custom water cooling's monetary value, if you are strictly focused on performance benefits, building a custom water cooling loop offers horrible return on investment regardless of PC components or liquid cooling complexity tier. No matter how much additional overclock your PC gets from custom water cooling, you'll never be able to overclock high enough to offset the cost of additional cooling components. Even if you were able to get an additional 20% overclock over all-in-one cooling solutions, it doesn't mean you'll get 20% more frames per second in-game. Clock speed is not a linear correlation with frames per second. Also, the lower your GPU on the performance spectrum, the worse the price to performance ratio of adding water cooling will be. It doesn't make any sense at all to water cool a single GTX 960 but it will be a far more reasonable endeavor to water cool SLI 980 Ti's. Therefore, you have to decide whether your GPU is at a performance tier that will make it worthwhile to pursue water cooling, or whether you will benefit more from upgrading your graphics card or adding another for SLI. Keep in mind, however, that any PC will reach a point that no matter how much more money you invest in your build, you won't see much performance benefit. If you have three-way or four-way SLI GTX 980 Ti's, you have such high levels of performance that adding a custom water cooling loop is like adding a single sprinkle on top of the icing on the cake. For me personally, when I had decided to water cool my GPUs, I had two GTX 780s. 
I thought a lot about whether I wanted to add a third GPU for three-way SLI or spend the cost on water cooling the GPUs I already had. I decided on water cooling because I wanted to dip my toes in the water, pun intended, and also going three-way SLI is still very hit or miss. You could get 30 to 50% more frames per second going to three-way SLI from two-way SLI, or you could very easily not gain many frames per second more. There will be many points in your build where you have to make similar decisions. There are PC builders who are conscious about idle temperatures, which are your system's temperatures when under low stress, like just web browsing or watching YouTube, and they want them to be as low as possible. Water cooling will give you better idle temperatures than air cooling, but idle temperatures have no bearing on system performance at high loads. It is also debatable whether lower idle temperatures gives any practical gain to processor life. Another performance consideration for water cooling your system is noise reduction. Unfortunately, when your system is idle, air cooling will outperform most water cooling setups because you have additional noise coming from the pump. There are some quiet optimized pumps that you can tune so that they operate at lower frequencies at low lows so they aren't as noisy, but even those mechanisms can be loud compared to just fans used in air cooling. Therefore, for project recording workstations and quiet optimized builds, water cooling is a no-go. At high CPU and GPU loads, there is no comparison. Water cooling will be significantly quieter, especially if you have an AMD graphics card. But this is going to be irrelevant for most, as a lot of PC gamers use headsets. Overall, you have to decide whether the low idle temperatures and low noise at high system loads are premiums on which you want to spend the extra money. Even taking higher overclocks into account, custom water cooling offers a horrible price to performance ratio, and the money used for water cooling could be better invested in graphics cards, SSDs, peripherals, or future builds. If custom water cooling gives so little benefit for so much expenditure, then why do so many enthusiasts still water cool their builds? Water cooling truly excels as a worthwhile pursuit when you approach it as a creative challenge. You now have complete aesthetic control over your build. You don't have to stick with the black opaque tubing that comes on so many of the all-in-one coolers. You now have a lot of room for creativity in deciding on your lube configuration. Do you want to go with a bay reservoir like I did or do you want to get a cylindrical reservoir that you stick where I have my 360 millimeter, whatever. But your system will truly be one of a kind. In English, we have a paraphrased proverb whose origins come from many renowned writers and which Miley Cyrus sang about that states, it's about the journey, not the destination. Remember how you felt once your first PC build booted? You can replicate that feeling by completing your custom water cooling loop. There will probably be complications and frustrations. The first two water cooling loops I did leak during the testing phase. No worries, I got past it, moved on, redid things. But overcoming the complications is part of the project and it leads to a satisfying conclusion. I need to work an innuendo into this somehow. Too lazy. Water cooling is not so challenging that you have to be extremely experienced to do it. However, it is the next challenge for PC builders looking to reach the highest possible levels of PC building complexity. At least for me, tackling the challenge is worth the monetary investment. In conclusion, where pure performance gain is concerned, custom water cooling is a poor investment relative to other components you could spend money on. However, if you do look to water cooling as a fun project and as a level of advancement in your PC building experience, then you will come out on the other side satisfied with your hard work and one of a kind system. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way through. I hope I was able to give prospective water coolers some insight on the value of custom water cooling. Be sure to leave a like rating on this video if I was informative and subscribe to my channel for more PC gaming and firearms reviews. My name's David and I will see you next video.